gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening, scheduled for three rounds in the Global Legion Welterweight Division. Introducing first, this man fighting out of the blue corner. He stands in at six foot three inches tall. He weighed at 170 and one half pounds. In seven professional bouts, he has four victories representing Extreme Couture, Greg Ellis. His opponent, this man, fighting out of the red corner. He represents Freedom Fighters Mixed Martial Arts. He stands in at 5 foot 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 146 ready pounds in seven bouts. He has five victories. I apologize. <laughs> In 14 bouts, he has eight victories. Ladies and gentlemen, weighing in at 170.8 pounds, oh, welcome to the cage, Marcos Loreda! Co-main event time here at Global Legion. Greg Ellis versus Marcos Laredo. And even though I made my little flub in the cage there, we at least got the particulars right, the names right. Marcos Laredo versus Greg Ellis here in our 170 pound co-main event and welcoming back to the broadcast crew, Danny Chavez. Danny, welcome back. Uh, we want to thank Clay Guida for joining us earlier. Danny, what'd you think of that last fight we saw? It was a great fight. I can't deny it was a great fight. Justin went out there and did his thing, man. You know what I mean? Uh, it was a back and forth. I just didn't know. The guy couldn't come out of the second, uh, after the, to the third round. He couldn't come out. You know, so, you know, props to Justin, man. He just, you know, like I said, uh, outside of the last fight, uh, he's been in a, in a tear. And now we're on to our co-main event. Has already started as a stand-up battle. Uh, Vince and I are very familiar with Marcos Loretta. Not only does he fight on the Global Legion cards, but he has commentated with us before. So a good friend of the booth here. And he is looking to get a victory over a very game, Greg Ellis, who is 4-3 and three in his mixed martial arts career. Yeah, two experienced uh, technical strikers here, Loretta and Ellis. Ellis is actually coming off three losses. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he can bounce back here and, and Loretta is as tough as they come. And they're both very game. And, technical so should be a great matchup now I don't know how many times you guys have used these in your fights but those spinning back fists for the percentage amount of times that they actually land I just don't find them practical in the cage even though sometimes you see that spectacular knockout what I saw there was him miss that spinning back fist and Ellis almost landed an overhand right yeah. how does the spinning back fist work as you guys are training that in the gym I think sometimes the spinning back fist is used after you throw like a kick and the kick misses and you kind of use that spinning back fist as a way to kind of keep yourself safe. But to your point, it's definitely a high risk maneuver and if you're not using it in that application and you're using it offensively, you really have to be kind of an expert at it. Yeah, timing has to come into, into it really well. You got to time it really well because when you finish the spinning back fist, you're very open. It's just, it's, you swing it so hard, you're very open for your face so you got to be careful. And, uh, you know, Loretta's a teammate to Justin, if, I, if I'm not wrong. So I would like to see if Loretta's, if Loretta's gonna go to the ground like Justin did in his previous fight. It looked like he just landed right hands right now. And they look like they both just wanna strike, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, Greg Ellis with a good calf kick and then Loretta with a good right hand. Pummeling up against this uh, corner right here. Loretta does a great job winning double under his reverse position. And Marcos with a good reversal there in the corner. It looked like Ellis was trying to create pressure, maybe to drop down for a takedown, but uh, Marcos was having none of it and has already reversed him. And he has a single underhook and now a reverse back from Ellis. And Ellis also was training at Hellman's and now they're announcing him out of Extreme Couture. So maybe he just got that, that streak of three losses and decided he needs to kind of take this thing more seriously, move out to Vegas, train with Extreme Couture. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes his game, if at all. Well, Ellis is, 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 you know, he's doing well. You know, you're talking about a guy like Roeda that's very experienced. 
has been in this cage already a couple of times. Uh, he's familiar with, with uh, being here. You know what I mean? So, and he looks good. You know what I mean? He's, oh, just, good setup. he's not out of the style whatsoever. They, they, they just started, so. I yeah, feel it's like, good back and forth. Yeah, I just want to see if Loretta's going to go to the ground like I saw Justin. You know, I know they're, they're two different fighters, right. but they come from the same camp. So there's tendencies, you know? Mm. One minute, 13 seconds left in round number one. And what's been so far, gentlemen, a pretty even fight between these two. I, I would not want to be a judge in this first round so far. We've had some pretty even scoring, I think, so far from both mm. fighters. And there we got a good left and right from Ellis, but he never truly landed anything solid, but now he's looking for a takedown here. And one of these guys is gonna have to do something to sway the judges here in this first round. Yeah, Loretta did a good job thwarting that, uh, that takedown with the underhook there. Um, and yeah, just a good back and forth matchup. Greg is kind of like the slicker, smoother striker. Loretta is very technical and aggressive. So shaking out to, to be a, a really great coming event. Nice move in the clinch. Yeah. Both guys are switching positions in the clinch, but nobody's establishing a, 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 a good one. They're switching. They're constantly switching. They're very busy with the clinch and the knees. I just I would like to see who who's gonna get that single to the double or, or the, why are we here? You know, why are we here? Yeah, oftentimes two great strikers, it, it depends on who's got the better grappling can kind of starts taking the, the lead here. Um, and Loretta again lands that right hand yeah. as he's coming forward. This is the third time this round where he's landed that. So Greg Ellis needs to be careful about that. And that was it for round number one, a very close first round. Guys, how do you score this on your card so far? I feel like they both guys were almost as busy, but I I always, when, when both guys are having the same pace and they're both uh, uh, as busy, I think I'll give it to whoever was more accurate, more efficient, and I think that was Loretta with his right hand. That was the most efficient thing that I saw. I said, you know, Ellis did some kicks, good, they both did a couple of reverses on the clinch, a couple of knees, nothing crazy. I think the only effective thing that I saw here was Loretta landing that right hand a couple of times, and that's about it. That's the most efficient thing I saw during the round, so I'll say Loretta. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. I think Loretta was a very close round, but he did land several of those right hands. And in a round where not too much is going on, that can kind of be the dictating uh, uh, perspective, but if it went the other way, I wouldn't be surprised. I was going to say, so my two cohorts here both have it going to Loretta. I am actually going the other way. I think Ellis, okay. with some of his pressures, might have stolen that first round. So we'll actually see again. That was a tough round to call. Guys, I want to go over as You guys are both professional fighters, and I think I've seen a lost art over the past years in the clinch work. And what I don't seem to see a lot from fighters these days are elbows from the clinch. Mm. Why do you think that is? Um... I think, um, to be very honest, I think there's a tendency in fighting, you know, like right now the, the cool thing is the spinning kicks and the flying knees and, um, you know, the spinning elbow like we just finished, uh, spinning back fist like we saw earlier, the calf kick is like the the cool thing now, everybody's throwing calf kicks, I've yeah. seen, I already saw a bunch of calf kicks today, right. so I think it's a tendency, I bet you, I'll tell you something, if somebody wins by a knockout from the clinch from an elbow, uh, they're going to start doing it, it's not like people don't do it, it's just, it's just not getting that popularity like normally back then Anderson Silva with the knees from the clinch it was very popular it died out a little bit or when he landed the front snap kick right you know you yeah, know that's so. an interesting perspective I never thought about it in a way of popular moves in MMA but it makes a little bit of sense here Greg Ellis is putting on a lot of pressure here at the beginning of this second round we're at the three minute 55 mark and I like the activity level so far it's so interesting to see two predominantly strikers play against the cage mm -hmm. because what happens is they both reverse each other really well because they're so used to the other person trying to take them down that they're great at reversing but not great at the pressure up against the cage. So that's been really interesting to watch just from, from that standpoint. It's been a stand-up battle. Beautiful calf kick from Ellis. That might have hurt Laredo. And a wonderful outside right kick from Ellis that puts... Lareda on the ground and Jumps now looking the for the guillotine choke here. And that thing looks fairly tight. We'll see if he can get enough leverage to finish it. Yeah, I don't agree with that from an MMA IQ perspective. 100%. Yeah, right out of it, right? This is why. This is why. What you just said, this is why. It's just a high risk maneuver and you end up on bottom. You know, if he had a butterfly hook and could sweep off of it, I could see maybe. But, but going full guard there 
in the middle of the canvas makes it really difficult. And that goes, that goes that goes to a couple of fights ago. We talked about that jumping for guillotines just because it's there. Yeah. It's not always the right thing to do because you have to look at the rest of your environment in the cage. How yeah. sweaty you guys are. Like you said, in the middle of the cage, you have no leverage, anything like that. So Who you're fighting. Yep. You know, Lorraine is a seasoned vet. You're not going to be able to just pull off a guillotine like that so easily. So. But very, but very, very smart from Ellis. He used, he walked himself to the cage. He you got his, uh, his, his wizard and used his body to use, he used the cage to get back up and he got the fight back up. Yeah, that now really he has to get beautiful. busy now. He has to get busy. I know the, the, they went to the ground because he kicked him. I know that calf kick is coming again. <laughs> you can see Laredo's uh, left calf is, is red and, and swelled up a little bit uh, from those calf kicks. One and, and, and you said that's the popular thing. We've seen fights <laughs> end because of calf kicks very recently. So that's what everybody's training heavily on, and it's already landed. And that right leg has some ground beef on it right now. Right. Or left there leg, I should say. Right there. One more time. And he's gingerly walking on it now. So. So it's, it's taking its toe. Let's see if Laredo tries to get some, some grappling going here, some wrestling, because uh, you know that calf kick's gonna start slowing him down. Ellis is starting to find good timing and a good angle off of it. Beautiful. Good uppercut from Ellis, but he swings wildly with an overhand right there. Good back and forth fight again. See this calf kick coming up, I can feel it. Mm. You, were, you were on the money. <laughs> you called it, you did it. You know what Lareda is doing that I liked, though, is he knows that kick is coming. And so in that instance right there, he used it to set up his overhand and to push Ellis up against the cage. So there is a way, depending yeah. on how hurt you are, to take advantage of that a little bit, too. It's a pretty dangerous game with the calf. With the thigh, I like it. Someone's going outside low kick, you take it, you throw an overhand. I love that. The calf being such a smaller muscle group, and it's like the lower leg, it kind of takes you off balance. Even if you are to land that overhand, your weight's not really there. Um, so it, for me, it's a much more dangerous game to play, and I think Ellis is going to win a lot of those. 100%. I think in, um, I recently saw a fight where it has to be so perfectly timed. The guy threw the calf kick, and the guy, the, his opponent threw the right hand and countered it right on the chin and caught him. But that's like, it doesn't happen all the time. And, and as you were talking, Danny, Ellis landed another calf kick, and you've got to think, how, oh, how nice much leverage is he going to have in the third round? good hips by Ellis. Very good hits Beautiful by Ellis. Beautiful wrestling takedown defense right there. Again, attempts the guillotine. Ellis seems to be trying to take control of this fight here at the very end of round two. A round I definitely think he has won so far. This is going to be very interesting getting to our third round in the co-main event here. You just heard the 10-second knock, and this round is about over. Yeah, what a fight. What a fight so far. All right, guys, let's talk about it. We had we had an iffy scorecard that first round. Let's talk about round two here. I, I, I assume we're all in agreement. Ellis took that round, right? Yes, 100%. Ellis got the calf kick, dropped him. That's the reason why they went to the ground. He was on top for a little bit, then they got reversed, but then he got back up. And he's been putting the pressure. He's, he's oh. when it comes out to, look at that calf kick. Yeah. When it comes out to damage, he's the one making the damage right in this round. This round, it was him making the damage. Uh, I know Loretta will land a couple of right hands still. He's probably still the better boxer when it comes to landing his hands. But um, I still thought Ellis put pressure and got it stole the round. I think it, it is 1-1 one, one right now. And a shout out to, to our me. replay crew here. A great job showing those calf kicks. We've been talking about them so much. And, <laughs> and you know, you, and you talked about how small that muscle group is. What you can do with that kick and that much damage in that muscle group, you can literally take away an entire basically post up leg for a fighter like Lareda that uses that front leg for his striking so much. If that leg's gone, how can he adjust? Yeah, it's tough, you know. I'd like to see him go southpaw, you know, but if you're not used to that, if you're not used to that stance, then it's difficult. To your point, Lareda did have better boxing. But now, with the calf kick, it's hard for him to set the weight, it's hard for him to sit down on his punches. And to Ellis's credit, the calf kick is opening up his boxing. So and it's another, in the third round. another mm. calf kick, Vince, just landed heavy. And Lorena's doing nothing to defend it at this point. And yeah. now he's going to open up other weapons. He's going to open up that, the high kick. He's going to open up other things. And like, like Vinny just said, his boxing was, was, was making him efficient during the fight. But now your lead leg is gone. So oh, it's going to make it very difficult for Loretta. But let's see. Let's see. It's still the third round. 
Yeah, Greg Ellis just really, you know, and we talked about him coming off three losses and the changes that he needed to make and, and seemingly has made mm -hmm. against a very tough Marcos Lareda here. You know, it's just, uh, it's inspiring to see somebody be able to just step back in there and, and get their confidence back. Big shots exchanged by both men there. Now, Vince, if I'm, if I'm Ellis at this point, though, don't you want this in the center of the cage? Yeah, I think so, but, you know, to his credit, the, the calf kicks have been opening up his boxing, and his boxing's been opening up another calf kick again, and those are hurting. You know? And Great is as tough as they come, but he can't take too many more of those. And we've got a great view there standing right in front of us. I don't know if you can see it on the broadcast here. We can see that calf, and it is in a lot of trouble. But look at Loretta. He's He can minimize damage in this way alone by keeping the pressure up against Ellis in the cage and maybe try and get a takedown. So if Ellis is smart here, he's going to reverse like he is and hopefully separate right. and get out to the center and just keep working on that calf. Lareda is a very game opponent. You can see it right here. If you, if you guys don't know, calf kick is painful. It throws off the whole entire base, your whole entire movement, your full work, your stance. You may have to go soft while if you're not trained like that, you're going to start striking horribly. Right. Man. You know, Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice right Beautiful. Right Beautiful. Right Another right Two right. monster overhand rights Beautiful from Ellis. And they're men. both throwing for the finish right here. Take down attempt from Ellis. Oh. The Raider does a great job stuffing and ends up in north-south. We could see Ellis getting tired right here. Bad choice, bad choice. Should have walked. If he's tired, run around the run around the cage, catch a breath. You were you were technically winning this run right now. And now Loretta, strong hips, good ground. Like I said, he comes. He's a he's a he's just his teammate. He has he has ground. Guys, the freedom fighters that work the ground a lot. And this could be the fight right here, guys. Right. If this is one to one going into round three, Lareda is now in the advantage. Even though he took the early calf kicks, if you end the fight like this, doing damage, judges are going to give you this round. Yeah, it's it's so tough for someone who was just bigging up Ellis on the way he, that he came back from those three losses and. Uh, Obviously, you want to see a great fight, but you hate to see a situation here where, where someone seemingly has beaten themselves. But look, wins the oh, underhook, gets oh, back up to his feet. Okay. Beautiful job from Greg Ellis. Ellis Lareda looks with a little gas here. Pressure. Beautiful. Beautiful takedown from Greg Ellis. Takes yeah. the back. Okay. Lareda spins for a leg lock there. Does a great job getting up himself. What a fight. Beautiful job from Lareda. Stay on top. And it is built up to the co-main event that it is. One minute, 40 seconds left to go. And we have a close fight here, folks, that can go either way. Ellis shoots in, gets his takedown. Lareda gets up, reverses, and is now on top of Ellis. Who is going to win this round? Yeah, this is coming down to really heart and grit and toughness. And Laredo seems to just have it in spades, dealing with those calf kicks early on. But has really turned this third round uh, around back in his favor. And I'll tell you what, if Laredo ends up winning this fight after taking the punishment he did, that's got to go a long way in the mental department too. Because you know how much that hurts. Danny, you were talking about it earlier, and yet you still dominate a third round and win a fight. That's yes. pretty impressive. 100%. And I always say this about fighters, you level up. You win fights like this, you level up mentally, you have so much confidence for the next one. And Ellis! Don't discourage yourself. You, do, you were doing an amazing job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right now it's all about IQ now. Like, yeah, and we were talking about in the last bout with Clay Guida about fighters mentally breaking when you feel someone's kind of starts to break and their will starts to go. And, you know, I think for Lareda, he can feel that, and he's starting to get a little bit of a boost on top. Now I can, I can see him talking to Ellis. And good punishment being rained down from Marcos Oida. He was throwing that big right elbow earlier. Now he's doing some damage to the midsection. 15 seconds left to go. You're about to hear the 10-second knock, and Lareda's trying to put a nice bow tie of a finish on this for the judges' scorecards. It was technically two strikers, and, it's, and it went down to who was the better grappler from both strikers. And that is it. This fight is over. Great job. Great Mutual fight. respect being shown in the cage here. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Who wins this fight? Loretta. I say I think Loretta the third round. It was Ellis was starting to win the round, but it went all the way around when when uh, he reversed it. He got, and then he got a takedown. Like, um, I think Ellis should have not never gone for his takedown that he went for. That changed. Mo fights is all about momentum sometimes, and I think like Loretta stole the momentum, 
he stole the fight, I think he won the fight. Yeah, 100%. But interestingly enough, you know, you had Ellis win in the first round. He clearly won the second round. Mm -hmm. If he wins that first round and the second mm -hmm. round, even though Lareda had this monster third round, we could still see Ellis winning this fight by decision. So, you know, it's really going to come down to that first round. So we'll see what the judges think. An excellent co-main event. I think we're all extremely happy with how this fight turned out. I will be in the cage very shortly for your winner's announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to an official decision, one more round of applause for a great co-main event! After three rounds of welterweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a split decision. Judge Seller scores the bout 29 28. Loretta. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Judge Boland scores the bout 29 27. Ellis. I apologize, folks. We had an incorrect marking on the scorecard. I'm going to correctly read the scores as I see them now. <laughs> Judge Gomez scores the bout 29-28, Loretta. Judge Boland scores the bout 29-27, Ellis. And Judge Skellers scores the bout 29-28 in favor of your winner by split decision and fighting out of the red card. Yes, 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 yes,